Hello there, good afternoon. This is Galaxy Television and the program is Democracy and the Rule of Law. Where we discuss democracy, we we'll discuss the rule of law, we we'll discuss law, we we'll discuss the constitution. This is what we do on the program. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at security because uh, the Hertzman farmers crisis is getting worse by the day uh, with the uh, leadership of the Southeast being uh, the latest regional leadership to ban open grazing all in the name of uh, naming the crisis in the bud. Uh, Governor Samuel Otomo Bindu State also calling the president out uh, over the stubborn trend of insecurity and resurgence of another IGP camp in Makodi and for his bias way of looking at the crisis. Uh, we'll also be taking a look at uh, Sunday Igbo's activism in this regard. It has generated uh, praise and criticism on equal measures. Uh, still on the security, uh, President Mohamed Bari uh, extended the tenure of the Inspector General of Police by three months. We're going to be taking a look at the implication of these. Uh, and of course, um, yeah, it, People's Democratic Party PDP uh, said the, uh, 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 yeah, they've come out to criticize uh, the President Radebari's appointment of the ex service chiefs as non career ambassadors. Uh, this is what we're going to be taking a look at on the security angle uh, for democracy and the rule of law. Also, we'll be going outside of Nigeria where Myanmar is in a democratic crisis. Uh, right now, tens of thousands have come out to protest uh, for the second day and running, uh, denouncing military coup, uh, demanding the release of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi, and uh, thwarting the military's attempt to stop anti coup rallies by imposing an internet uh, shutdown. Yeah, the protesters march in Yangyan for a second consecutive day, uh, carrying red balloons, the color of Suki's National League for Democracy and LG, and chanting, We don't want military dictatorship, we want democracy. So these are the issues we'll be discussing on today's episode of Democracy and the Rule of Law. We'll go for a break. When we'll come back, I'll introduce my guest, and of course, we'll start details of the topic to right back the doorway okay for just tuning in this is democracy and the rule of law on galaxy television i have a barrister mike umona he's a legal practitioner of course he's also a regular on this show good to have you in the program today thank you for having me good afternoon nigerians then i have uh, someone that's new to the program uh, is a uh, barrister james on I got that question. Oh, no, you. Oh, no, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, Thank he's you. also a legal practitioner. Of course, uh, you know, this program where you bring legal practitioners, of course, uh, lawmakers to uh, discuss these issues because uh, uh, we treat this uh, topic of issues from the angle of the law. And of course, uh, from Abuja, we have a Zoom meeting with uh, Barrister Frank Tietier. He's also a legal practitioner joining us on the program today. So, are you welcome to the show today? Hi, thank you. My pleasure. Okay, so uh, let's quickly take a look at a topic for discussion. Our first topic uh, the security situation is getting worse by the day. And um, uh, I mean, the Hetman uh, um, farmers' crisis is uh, not the only security issues we have right now. We have banditry, we have kidnapping, but it uh, uh, looks like the Hetman uh, farmers' crisis is, is at the front burner, especially at the uh, southwest, where having, uh, especially in uh, Ogun State and Oyo State, uh, that brought to the rise of a Sunday Igbo was active activism. But well, let's take a look at the crisis, the uh, herdsmen and uh, farmers crisis for a start. Well, well, let me have you say on that. Uh, very well, sir. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, we, have, we are having this kind of uh, scenario in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, the thing just started as if uh, we were playing games and then suddenly it is becoming hydra headache. Mm -hmm taking a dimension that is going to be very difficult to control if care is not taken. And that is why you see people come out like the, the, the ones we are talking about to ask them, the, 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 the headsmen, to vacate the alarm, to vacate where they are not supposed to be. 
and then move to their own territories or move out to where human beings are living. In fact, when they are told to move out of the forest, mm. I think it's a, a legitimate order that they should move out of the forest where they are not, forests are not inhabited by human beings. Forests are inhabited by animals. So they should leave the forest and move to where human beings are so that we can monitor their actions, we can monitor what they have and all that. We have seen over the periods how herdsmen have, with a sheer abandon, destroyed uh, farmers, destroyed their products, destroyed crops all over the place, and then they moved into kidnapping. This kidnapping did not, I mean, it was not as rampant until they came into the sea. And then you now have, when they, when, they, when they come out, they just kidnap people and move into the bush and they, they, they bring in another, another slogan they call, I mean, a, a, a language they call banditry. banditry. They just move out and kill people and do all manner of things and disappear into the bush. And then the, all these things have been going on. And once they come out, I mean, uh, these issues arise like that. What happens is that, the government is supposed to have taken appropriate action against the perpetrators of this act. But the government seems to be uh, uh, looking the other way and encouraging, especially the uh, Fulani henchmen, to continue to rampage, to continue to cause havoc, to continue to kill the, 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 the farmers. And then they believe that they own the place, they own the land and all that, and they speak and they say all manner of things, and nobody is arrested. That is why this thing will continue. And until something is done about it, until the people are arrested, until they are punished, until the president of Nigeria come out to say, I am not in support of this headsman's action mm -hmm. until that is done. And then it's not just saying it, there will be appropriate action to follow. There must be prosecution, there must be arrest, and the, the, this people must be punished publicly. Let the world see that the actions have been taken in respect of people who go to uh, kill and maim and rape uh, at random and then uh, disappear. Let there be punishment, let there be proper punishment meted out so that these people will now no longer have it as a safe trade, mm -hmm. a safe profession to go into. That's why you have people waking up every day to say we are now taking the, uh, the, the issue of uh, security into our hands mm -hmm. because the government has failed us, the government is no longer able to, 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 to protect us against Okay, be, be, before, be, before we get to that, now I, I will come to you, uh, Barrister Onuniwu. Uh, let, let's go to Abuja where we have uh, Barrister Mike uh, Frank Tete joining us. Uh, let, let's hear your view, sir, on that issue. Uh, insecurity in Nigeria is beyond uh, uh, the issue of farmers. Headers uh, cr uh, crisis, which has been in existence for a long time. What we have now is an increase in uh, an increase in banditry and kidnapping uh, associated with a foreign invasion by certain persons who have a network that crisscrosses over about uh, eight West African countries. Uh, they have decided to make Nigeria a target we are now a victim of an international attack by certain persons who uh, we, we, we've seen their actions before now in places like senegal in mali in Cote d'ivoire and uh, these are places that are a uh, crisis africa in general and, uh, and especially west africa uh, has been a place um uh, torn apart with crisis we in nigeria have been fortunate before now we have been the ones sending uh, uh, Peace Corps missions to, by way of uh, supporting ECOMOG, the ECOMOG uh, uh, troops in, to, to bring peace to Liberia, to Sierra Leone. Uh, but this time around, it's our turn. We are faced with serious militia movements that, are, that, are, that, are, that want to destabilize our country, that want to make life un, uh, unbearable and make the state ungovernable. So the issue is whether our government is rising up to the challenge. And unfortunately, if I must answer that, uh, the government is failing. 
uh, the security forces are failing, in, uh, the, 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 the leadership of the security is failing. And so we need to look at it from that dimension. We see foreigners. These are not people you know. Uh, they may be predominantly of the Fulani tribe. But what we're saying is that how can we have people, ordinary people, in the guise of being headers, uh, carrying AK-47 in a country where firearms are, are, are seriously regulated, only the president and to a small extent the commissioners of police can grant licenses to, to, to own ammunition. Not that kind of ammunition. You can't even, the president will, only the president can grant the license to own an AK-47. But you see, in the name of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rearing cattle or what livestock business, you find foreigners, not Nigerians, they're not indigenous to these communities. Look at all the people causing trouble in southwest Nigeria, uh, or in northeast, I mean, north central Nigeria, even in, um, and then going to, to, to south south Nigeria. These are not Nigerians. These are persons who, who, who broke through our poorest borders. So this is just a reflection of the failure of governance in our country for a long time. And I hope that we get out of, the, uh, out of it, because now that we are seeing complacency on the part of government and seeing this inaction and lack of political will on the part of government, I just hope that the, 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 the various conspiracy theories, which are not meant to be believed, but they simply serve as explanations because there are no plausible explanations, no meaningful and reasonable explanations that, 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 that can satisfy the Nigerian populace at this time. With the Nigerians now resort, Nigerians now resort to, to, to conspiracy theories saying that, oh, uh, by, uh, the Nigeria will be taken over by a certain tribe, tribe of men from Guinea, from, uh, from all sorts of places who want, to, uh, who want to take over Nigeria by 2022. So this kind of hopeless situation being corroborated by the Nobel laureate himself, Professor Wolin that he foresees a civil war in the next one or two years. I think we are dealing with a very serious crisis here. We need to, we, we need to really call this government to order, to realize that again and again, the principal role of government, according to section 14, subsection 2 of the constitution is to, to cater to the welfare and security of Nigerian citizens. So we cannot appear, afford a failed state. We have put too much in this country to fail in the, just because of a band of men who want to make our security forces appear lame and impotent. That is unacceptable. Okay, I, I will just, just stay with us now. Uh, you heard him. Um, I, I've heard that uh, these Fulanese are not Nigerians, are the ones from Niger, uh, from Chad Republic, and he seemed to be buttressing that fact. Uh, but do you agree with that? I, 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 don't know. I don't know because the president himself admitted that these people came from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Libya into Nigeria and all that. Maybe they have privileged information. But wherever they come from, how did they enter with AK-47 and all manner of ammunition into Nigeria? And if they have entered or they have entered by look of food, then the security forces in Nigeria should have been able to flush them out. What does it take to flush out aliens? People that are not wanted in the system. What does it take the security forces to flood them okay. out? We have we we, we have a technology. By this time, the, the security forces should be, uh, be able to deploy this uh, a system of technology that will be able to monitor everything that is going on in the forest mm. and wherever these people are found, and then they will be flushed out easily. Okay, let me come to Barstow on the um, some persons have said the president is biased on this issue, probably because uh, uh, the tribe that's associated to this hexman uh, are from where he's from, the Fulani. So, is that your take? Uh, be before I go in, I'm very worried about the situation in the country. Mm -hmm. Why am I worried? Some people go into farms, destroy the farms, and kill the people that own the farms, kidnap people. And when the citizens rise up, to face these people, the presidency comes and says, no, you can't do that. Mm. Let us discuss. But there was no discussion at the time these Fulani people were doing their havoc. If you recall, the Undo State Governor gave a marching order that they should vacate. And the presidency came. For it. The presidency came again and said, no, mm. uh, you can't. What is actually happening? Your question and my response now, should, yeah, I'm sure they are in pari material. Mm. They are in tandem. 
Why is the presidency protecting these people? Why? People carry AK-47. Uh, the police see that sometimes. And they will not. In <laughs> fact, in fact, was it last week? One of the governors in the north started trying to promote that the government should allow people to bear arms mm. so that they can face this menace. Mm. We, we will be taking a look at that today. But, uh, but um, in the presidency defense, he, he had hardly come out to say anything. So it's not just on this issue. He's been silent almost throughout his, his tenure. So uh, will, will you still take his silence as him being biased on this? Well, I don't want to use a, a foul language against our president, but he's like a lame dog in this matter. What is but well, silence is it's, it's ascribed to be acceptance. Now you accept what is going on. How can people be killing your people? And then you are quiet. And then you can come on national newspaper to say these people are not from your country. Then why are you not acting? Why? It, 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 there's cause to worry. I don't know whether all those people in the cabinet are part of these uh, Libyans. Probably they are from the same um, country. <laughs> because that's the only explanation hmm, because they, give. Because the lawmakers aren't even talking yeah, about it. Nobody's talking. Hmm. Nobody talking about it. People, we see them on TV. If it is anything to go by, people carrying AK-47 on the street. Okay, how do you people get those uh, videos when we see them on TV with the AK-47? How do people, how do the press people uh, get the uh, footage? I mean, it's all over the internet. <laughs> Good. So how do they get these things? So if it can be gotten, it means the government can also get this situation. If young boy, you see them carrying AK, do you know AK-47 can kill a whole street? One, one gun can finish this whole area of people. I mean, ranging from 1900, because it's machine gun. We're not talking about uh, pistols or pump action. It's a machine gun. One, one click discharges a lot of bullets. And then we see these things. And then we keep quiet. It, it's worrisome. So the silence of the presidency is worrisome too. There's only one explanation. There must be collusion. Okay, okay let, let me go back to uh, Barrister Tietje here. Um, let's take a look at another vital part of the security issues where, in, in the sense where uh, someone decides to take up the mountain and fight the headsman. Uh, uh, let's talk about Sunday Bo. Now, his fight against the headsman has, you know, generated both praise and criticism on the equal measure. But of course, uh, in this part of Nigeria, the, the south, south, uh, west, of course, the praise is higher. So, um, what do you think are the repercussions? I mean, he, he is doing this without the backing of the law, uh, but is it necessary? Some are saying yes, it is necessary uh, because the security personnel are not coming out to do anything about it. Let's have your take on it. You know, uh, Sunday Boho has just uh, risen up to a very difficult situation. And uh, why he's a hero is because so many people consider him to be acting in self-defense. Uh, self-defense is uh, acceptable in law or in a situation where uh, somebody is under a, a grave threat, a threat that threatens, uh, uh, you know, that will threaten life, that will take life. And the situation you find in the Southwest, where for a long time, I, you know, when you hear people like Yinka or Duma King, graphically talking about how much damage uh, uh, the headsman in the name of headsman because i want to make reference to captain aliu the famous captain aliu's analysis who is also a full animal that what you see each time uh, mietiala comes up to uh, you know to defend whatever actions that have been taken to uh, against uh, you know open grazing against head headers in any part of the country they are accepting a problem that, is, that isn't theirs. So w when uh, uh, Governor Kredolu asked headsmen to leave government reserved uh, areas, you know, there was, it was a security measure. There was no basis for Mieti Hala to, to, to complain. There was also no basis for the presidency, as my colleague has referred to, to, to rise up in defense of, uh, against an, a lawful order of a governor. So going back to Sunday, Boho, it's painful and terrible that, you know, Nigerians will have to resort to self-help before they can secure themselves. That ought not to be. 
However, in, if, when, when you find militias, that be, you know, organized militias threatening to destroy life the way we have recorded in Agatu, in Benue State, what the way that it has been recorded across the land. When you see that the level of insecurity with kidnappings and banditry on the rise, you cannot expect that people who find one way or the other as themselves as ethnic leaders or community, community leaders will not in any way rise up in self-defense. It's a very difficult situation. Why those of us who are sticklers for the rule of law will not want anybody to create any form of an army to defend within this state, to, to create any form of a militia within this state. But we have had a militia that has operated in unbridled circumstances. No, it is better that we have some form of, you know, organized community policing, community security, as we had in, in Bono State. We, we don't forget, this is a very painful thing. Nigeria has been fighting insurgency in the last 10 years, and it has not been able to defeat Boko Haram. Now we have recorded some progress when the civilian JTF, a vigilante that has been organized by the locals in Borno State, decided to join forces with the, uh, the, the, the conventional Nigerian army, um, Nigerian military, before we started recording some progress. So I, don't, I, I would have expected that somehow the Sunday Boho intervention should have been with some blessing of the state governors so that the, he can work in, uh, in uh, hand in hand with the police. You cannot do without the, 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 the call for state police. I have never felt so deceived by, by, by the APC government when it campaigned so loudly that they were going to establish state police when they, when they eventually have voted in. That was the only ground I, 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 I gave some sympathy to the APC. Only for the APC, four years after its, uh, its taking over power, we are in the fifth year, APC has not done anything, the Buhari-led administration has not done anything to ensure that the state police, you cannot have a unitary police operating in a federal system. You cannot have a police force right here in Abuja trying to, go to, to police the local uh, you know, uh, nooks and crannies in faraway places like Obomosho and the rest of that. You cannot. You need to have a police on ground that is subject to the control of the governor as, in, as, as contemplated by Section 215 of the Constitution, which is not practical. So it's, I would have expected that this, if we are serious, if we are serious as a country and a people to solving this problem, in solving this problem that is facing us now, then we must quickly move to ensure that we can have some form of organized state police so that the governor will be able to protect those that voted him into power. How do you give somebody political power and he's not able to control any form of force to protect the people? That is useless and that's the situation we have. So we expect that Sunday Boho should be embraced and, you know, in, in a manner that he can cooperate with the conventional police so that we can have peace and security in not only in Yoruba land, but all over Nigeria. We expect such men to rise up, rise up in the south-south, rise up even in the north-central where we are, so that we can uh, expect that they can walk hand in hand with the mean, police. His in actions the have even provoked uh, uh, the southeast governor, Sue, to come out and uh, ban open grazing. But are there any legal implications to that? Because, I mean, he's doing this without the backing of the law, obviously. But that's but, Sunday Bobo. Yes, Sunday Bobo, yeah. You know, the law, the law protects, if the law gives you power to defend your property, however you can. So if somebody marches into your, your farm, you can kill him just to defend your property. The law will pro protect you in that position because that's defense to property. Not that you go about looking for people to kill. Hmm. You, there must be a threat to your property to so, what belongs so do you to you think in this case, case there is a threat to his property well well i do not think so i would say in all honesty that he may be going outside the purview of the law because he's now going about looking for people who didn't offend him who has not threatened his uh, existence they are offending his tribe are they the same thing he's not a crusader he's not a crusader he, they are offending the tribe there's a governor there the law has provided police security, there's the uh, army, there's DSS, so he's not empowered by law to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But necessity is the mother of invention. Okay. Necessity is the, if the policeman will, look, have you, if you go to Enugu State, 
The last time I was there, some people went to the police station to report this same problem. The police did not act. Mm. They didn't act. So what are people supposed to do? People have to rise up. Mm. So in one, in one breath, he may be doing an illeg illegality by doing that. In another breath, he's protecting himself, mm. he's protecting his family, he's protecting his, um, his tribe, he's protecting his property. I am an advocate of the law uh, for them to promulgate a law that arms everybody. Mm. Everybody should be armed. Mm. If, the, if the government will see headsmen carrying AK-47 and turns bright eye, then everybody should be carrying AK-47. Mm. Because once they know that you have AK-47, they will not come out. Because they know their life. Not everybody loves their life. Mm. Everybody loves life. So, so let, 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 let's, let's stay with that now, bearing arms now. Um, don't, you think that, don't you think that will be another level of crisis? Then the government because, should do what they have to do. Because Nigerians are generally hot-headed, and um, years of pent-up anger, Add to all these. I mean, that it's a my brother. Like, look, look. It's if, like if, a bomb. If I enter here, happen. if I enter here with guns, and I know you have guns, there'll be some sort of sanity, because everybody's armed. You know, but you won't open fire on somebody that you know that is also loaded. Okay. I think that's supposed to be a checkmate, one kind of way, because I mean, it's cheating when you have one side of the divide holding guns, the government is seemingly protecting them, and then you are alone. Why? That, that's the only reason why you are afraid of policemen. Because when they stop you at the checkpoint, they are armed. Mm -hmm. And they have an authority to arrest and all. If, they, if everybody is on the same level playing field. If I'm traveling on, from Lagos to uh, uh, Benin, I'm afraid. Because somebody can jump out of the bush with guns. Mm -hmm. But if I'm armed, uh, let's, let's face ourselves. Now, in a country that's already known for jungle justice, <laughs> I mean, let's take, just take a look Everybody at that. Everybody will respect himself knowing that the other man has a gun. Okay, okay. Let, 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 uh, you see, uh, uh, Solomon, uh, uh, self-preservation hmm. is the first law of nature. Nature, yes. The moment you have somebody that is coming to threaten your life, hmm. you will do everything to preserve your life. To preserve your life. And that is exactly what Sunday Google is He's doing. doing. He is trying to ensure that he preserves his life and preserves the life of everybody that is around him. Every, everyone that he knows is open to threat, to being uh, 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 decapitated, to being killed, to being dislodged from their environment, from their ancestral home, and all that. So I, I, I do not, what the man has done is actually going to trigger the same action in several other areas that we have this threat mm. all over. Because the threat is spreading. That is exactly it's spreading. what is going to happen. And if uh, uh, the president, because he is the one in charge of this, if the president continues to keep mute and watch what is going on, by the time he wakes up, as often he does, he would discover that it would have been too late. Mm. Because when these people have armed themselves properly, and then they start confronting this book, the thing will result into ethnic war. That, that, and ethnic war is very, very terrible. Okay, because that means you're on the side of people should bear arms. Uh, very well. In all of us, like my, my, my colleague has said, once all, all of us bear arms, then you cannot threaten me because, in fact, the moment you put your hand, I'm also putting my hand. And you know, I mean, that is exactly, people. and there are rules. Okay. Rules governing bearing of arms anyway. Okay. And, so, and so once once we allow that to happen, you you see that there will be sanity in the land. Mm. I, I, I I support in fact the security network in Nigeria has broken down irretrievably. We need to, to establish state police like Ekete has said. Mm. We need to even establish local government police. We need police in three uh, stages. Just like so we have the three states of government. Some, some, other, some other countries. Mm. So, so that the, 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 the people will have a sense of security when they know that they have people around who are who, who are going to secure them. The moment the moment armed robbers, the moment hesmen hmm. strike, hmm. and they know that some some security uh, people are around the corner, they will want to run away and they will not even start. These days they operate for hours hmm. and no, 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 no. Look, Solomon, let me tell you. Bearing arms is not a new thing now. If you, last year, a container was seized in uh, the ports 
where some young men who came in had guns in their container. Everybody is waking up to the fact that we are on our own. Mm -hmm. So what's left is for, for, for the National Assembly, as it were, to make it legal and stipulate well, some laws. I, I don't think anybody is waiting for the National Assembly anymore. <laughs> Nobody. Look, let me tell you, nobody's waiting for them anymore. It is because they have security, that's why they are relaxing. Mm -hmm. When they leave that situation where nobody's guarding them, then they will understand what is going on. In fact, it is happening every day. It is happening every day. I'm telling you, if you go to a lot of houses, whether you like it or not, you see some. You, I'm sure you are seeing these things. Okay. Because people have seen that we have a, a lame dog leading us. And that's why you can see, how can you qu query a governor who has asked people to leave a, a government reserve area because of certain crimes of, and then you are, you are challenging the governor. Is the governor not supposed to protect his people? So you start wondering, where are we going to? What, what's happening to this country? Okay, uh, uh, Barisai Tete, are you um, subscribing to the bearing of arms? I, I, I just hope someone is by my side here because uh, bearing of arms, it, it is really, really frightening, you know, to be frank. So um, I don't know if he's still online with us to have his view. It's until they, well, you, you know, look. How many times do you hear robbers enter people's houses in the UK mm -hmm. or in America? You don't hear those things. Because everybody, if you go to America, you know, there are a lot of people bear arms. In, in as much as it is, it is necessary, it is also frightening, to be frank. I mean, I I said, it's, I it's, I it's not frightening. There are rules. There are rules. Mm -hmm. Before you are given the arms, there are rules of oppression, of usage. And so everybody will be conscious of the rules of using the arms. It's not just any provocation and now that you bring out the arms. No. There are rules of engagement. And so the moment they make it legal, you will see that things will change. Mm -hmm. The man that is holding AK-47, uh, 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 wandering in, inside the forest looking for somebody to, to kill and all that, will think twice.